Last weekend, I selected five cows to permanently remove from my herd. If you missed that video, it went sort of like this. So I thought that today we would go over the numbers, talk about what I got, and also discuss a little bit about my strategy of trying to sell some of these girls as bred cows rather than butcher cows. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. Before we get into the numbers, first I want to talk about the strategy of selling bred cows versus butcher cows. I got a ton of questions about this, far more than I was expecting, and that tells me that I really didn't do a very good job of explaining that process. I think that I made it sound like in order for me to sell the cows as bred females that all I had to do was drop them off at the auction and tell the guy, hey, these girls are bred, I demand a premium for them. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not how it works. In order to sell cattle as bred females, what happens is that when I drop them off at the auction, I tell the guy, you know, hey, these cows were with a bull, I'm pretty sure that they're gonna be bred, and if they are bred, I'd like to sell them as such. At that point, he'll make a note on the pink slip saying that the cows need to be preg checked, and prior to the sale, a licensed vet will go in preg check the cows and verify whether or not they're bred. If they are bred, they'll go as bred females. If not, then they go as butcher cows. So yes, there is some assurance that the cattle are bred before they're sold as bred females, but that still doesn't answer the other big question that I got. And that is, if the cattle aren't good enough for me to keep and breed in my own herd, then why would I assume that they're good enough for someone else to keep and breed in their herd? It's a fair question. To answer that question, I guess I would first have to say that I don't presume to know what is best for someone else's herd. That's a decision that that buyer is going to have to make on their own. When buying cattle at auction, it is widely understood that the cattle are there because there's a problem. People don't take their best quality stock and sell them at the auction. If they do want to sell them, then they would probably go private treaty or something um, along those lines where they have more control over what they'll get for that animal. When buying bred cattle at auction, you are only promised three things. One, she's alive. Two, she can walk. And three, she's bred. Other than that, there are no promises or assumptions about anything else about that animal. You don't know her demeanor. You don't know how old she is. You don't know other quality. You don't know if she had just been limping for six months and she just got over it. You just don't know these things. And buyers understand that. What they see in the ring is a cow that is ambulatory and bred. And for some buyers, that might be enough. The market report for the sale barn that I use regarding the sale that was prior to the sale that my cattle were in listed bred cows at around $1,200 to $1,400 a head. When you compare that to the price of replacement females from a purebred seed stock producer that are going to be well into the thousands or even as much as tens of thousands of dollars, you can kind of see how it might be worth it for somebody to take a chance on those cattle if when they're looking at them in the ring, they kind of look okay. Not to mention the fact that there are cattle flippers out there who could be buying these bred cows, letting them have their calves at their place, and then reselling them as pairs, making a quick few hundred bucks. It just kind of goes back to what I said originally, is that I can't assume that I know what's gonna be good for somebody's operation because odds are it's not gonna be exactly like mine. With all that being said, selling these cattle as bred cattle is an easy way for me to add value to my coal cows and possibly create an opportunity for somebody else. Because after all, at the end of the day, this is a working ranch and we're trying to make money here. 
I got bills to pay too. I hope that answers your questions about the whole bread cows versus butcher cows thing. And if you have any more questions, of course, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Now let's talk dollars. Before we get started, I just have to say that this is a little bit uncomfortable going over money and numbers and things like that. But in all reality, anybody can go on the internet and look at what butcher cows are bringing in this area or I mean anywhere across the country. So it's really no huge secret, but it is just kind of weird, <laughs> I guess. Uh, but anyway, let's get started on the list here. So at the top of the list is one of the solid black cows. I'm guessing by her weight that this was number 15. She was one of the black cows that didn't have a calf this year and I was kind of wondering about her fertility. And evidently I was right to wonder because she came up open. Now, because she wasn't bred, she will go to auction as a butcher cow and that means that her value is diminished a little bit. I got 53.75 cents per pound for her, which is really not great for butcher cows. Uh, it wasn't that long ago that we were getting around 70, 75 cents a pound and, and th those were good days, but uh, at least with her, she had enough pounds to sort of make up for it. So the total that we got for her was $916.44. Next on the list was one of the red cows, and I'm really not sure which is which here because they were within 100 pounds of each other, so it's kind of hard to tell. They don't tell me which ear tag I had in their ears. So it was one of the red cows. She weighed 1,515 pounds, and she also came up open. Now with both of the red cows, neither one of them had a calf this year and they had had some issues in the past. So fertility was definitely a big question mark with these girls. And I mean, while we're talking about the red cows, it will just include the other one as well. She was also open. So I think I made so far three good decisions of cows to get rid of because they were not bred. The other red cow was 1,615 pounds. So they were exactly within 100 pounds of each other. And oddly enough, they got slightly different uh, price. So the lighter cow got 52 cents a pound and the heavier cow got 52.25 cents a pound. So not a huge difference, but a little bit of a difference nonetheless. Because they were a little bit lighter and their price really wasn't that great, I got $787.80 for the lighter red cow and $843.84 for the heavier one. Next on the list is the biggest cow that we took to the sale, and I believe that this was black number 39. She was an absolute tank, barely fit down the loading alley to get into the trailer, and she came in tipping the scales at 1,810 pounds. I thought that she might break the one ton mark, but I, uh, I guess I was a little optimistic on that. If she too, fertility problems in the past and was, was having them again this year because she came up open. So because of that, she was sold as a butcher cow and we got 52 and a half cents a pound for her. Now, again, these prices per pound are, are pretty bad, honestly. Um, I think last year we were getting in the mid 60s and the year before that maybe in the 70s. And I know things go up and down, but man, um, if these girls weren't so heavy, I mean, we'd almost be giving them away. Because she had so many pounds, I got $950 for her, which is pretty good for a butcher cow. But when you think about the price per pound, it's, it's really not that great. And last but not least was number 46, which would have been a second calf heifer had she had a calf when she should have in the first year. She actually did come up bred this time, which I thought that she probably would. So maybe that's one that I should have kept, but I mean, it's too late now, you know, what's done is done. She came in at 1,460 pounds, which is actually really big for a second calf heifer. And because she was bred, rather than selling her by a per pound price, they go a per head price. Now, at the sale prior to the one that my cattle were in, as I mentioned before, bred cows were going for about $1,200 to $1,400 a head. Apparently, the market dropped a bit because she only brought $1,050. If I 
if she would have been open and I would have sold her as a butcher cow or if I hadn't have got her preg checked, she, assuming that she would have got similar prices that these other cattle got, I would have gotten about $700 for her. So my, my $20 investment to preg test all five cows yielded me a $300 return. That's pretty good, but it would have been nice if a few more of those cows were bred. Oh well. That brings our total for 2020 coal cows to $4,548. But now we gotta pay fees because uh, nothing's free in this world. So first of all, the commission to the sale yard, this is how they make their money. For the five cows, it was $150.43. After that is beef promotion, which I think is a dollar per head because we got charged $5. Uh, brand inspection was $7.50 for the five cows. Yardage and insurance was $5. We had to pay a feed bill because the cows were there for a few days and the sale barn had to feed them. That was $37.50. Uh, we got a fee here for the cattle council, which that's a new one. Actually, they just voted that in. That was $5 or a dollar per head. And the preg test for all five was $20. So that brought our total fees to $230.43, which means that we took home a grand total of $4,317.90. So am I happy? Am I disappointed? I really have mixed feelings about it. I mean, for five cows, $4,300 isn't bad, but what really saved us here is that all the cows that I got rid of were, were huge. I mean, in total, they weighed over 8,000 pounds altogether. So that's... That's what really saved us here because honestly, at 52 cents a pound, I mean, somebody's getting rich here, but it's not me. <laughs> but that's just the way it goes sometimes, especially in this business. You win some and you lose some. Now with coal cows in the rear view mirror, we can focus on the future and what is about to come from these cows that made the cut because they should be dropping calves in about two or three months. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch. Mm -hmm.